Right, the Intermediate 2 Mathematics 2012 Paper 1 and Calculator. I'm just going to go through the solutions for the benefit of my classes. Question 1 basically gives us a very large number and says round it to four significant figures. So I've written down the number. There it is there. So that'll be 1 trillion, 157 billion, 818 million, 887,139. Four significant figures, basically count along to the fourth number. So there it is there, I've underlined it, it's the seven. That is in the billions column, I think. Yeah, in the billions column. So I'm going to round it to the nearest billion. So looking here, this number here is five or more. So it's going to be slightly closer to 1 trillion 158 million than it is to 1 trillion 157 million. So basically we'll round up. All of those become zeros. Go at one mark, written for SF, four significant figures afterwards. Question two, a teacher recorded the marks out of 10 of a group of pupils for a spelling test. Part A, copy the table and add a cumulative frequency column. So there's the table that's given. Cumulative frequency basically means add up the frequencies as you go along. So we've got two, and we've got a five, two add five, seven. And here's the 6. Well, the first 2 add up to 7. 6 add 7 is 13. Or 2 add 5 add 6 is 13. Add on 11 is 24. Add on 9 is 33. Add on 2 is 35. So basically add on the frequencies. Right, so that's one mark. Part B. From this data, find the median, the lower quartile, the upper quartile. Right, there are... 35 values, because if you add up all the frequencies, it comes to 35. Right, if we have 35 values, the middle value, well, let's just think of it like this. There's 35 values. If I split those up, I'd have 17 at the bottom, then be one in the middle, the 18th value in the middle, then there'd be another 17. 17 on the left, add on one in the middle, add on another 17, comes to 35. So we're looking for the 18th value, because that's the one after the first 17 values. So looking up here, the first two values are 5. The first 7 values are 5 or 6. The first 13 values are 5, 6 or 7. Then the 14th all the way up to the 24th value is 8. So the median is 8. Right, the lower quartile is the middle of the bottom half. So the 17 values in the bottom half, if I have 17 values, I split them up, there'll be 8 values, then the middle one, then another 8 values. So we're looking for the value after the first 8, so we're looking for the ninth value. So the lower quartile will be the ninth value, again, back up to the list. First seven values are five or six, then up to the 13th value will be seven. So the eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th value will all be seven. There we go. And the upper quartile, which we can also call Q3, is the middle of the top half. So 17 in the top half, just like there was 17 in the bottom half. So we'd have 8, followed by another one, followed by 8. So it's the one in the middle we're looking for. So we had 17, 18, 26. We're looking for the 27th value along. So again, back up to here. The first 24 values are 8 or below 8. Then the 25th all the way up to the 33rd will be 9. So that will include the 27th. So Q3 is 9. Upper quartile is 9. Go three marks for that. Part C, draw a box plot to illustrate this data. Well, we have the median, Q2. We have the lower quartile, Q1. The upper quartile, Q3. We also need the lowest value, which is 5, and the highest value, which is 10. So we just need to put that into a box plot. So here's a box plot here. The start of the box plot, the whisker there, is the lowest value, which is 5. The start of the box is Q1, which is 7. The line in the box 
is Q2, the median, which is 8. The line here at the end of the box is Q3, which is 9. And the end of the box plot, the last whisker, is the highest value, which was 10 from up there. There we go, it's 1 and 2 done. On to number 3. Number 3 gives us a straight line. The straight line with equation 4x plus 3y equals 36 cuts the y-axis at a. This means 4 times the x-coordinate plus 3 times the y-coordinate equals 36. So on that straight line that's given in the question, if you do 4 times the x-coordinate, add 3 times the y-coordinate, you're always going to get 36 for any point on the line. No matter which point you picked on the line, you put the x and the y-coordinate in there, it always comes to 36. That's how they link together. Right, so looking at point A, point A, we don't know how high up it is, but we know that the x-coordinate is 0 because it's sitting on the y-axis. So we'll do 4 times 0, which is nothing. Add 3 y's. Add 3 y equals 36. So 3 y equals 36, because again, this bit's nothing. So 36 divided by 3 y will be 12. So the coordinate will be 0, 12. One mark for doing that. Then part B. It says this line meets the line through 0, 8 parallel to the x-axis. At C is shown, find the coordinates of C. Well, because it's going through B at 0, 8, and it's parallel to the x-axis, that means the height of C, the y-coordinate of C, will be 8. So again, back to the 4x plus 3y equals 36. 4x plus 3 8, because the y-coordinate is 8, equals 36. 4x plus 24 is 36. Take 24 away from both sides, or if you like, move the 24 over and it becomes negative. 4x will be 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So x coordinates 3, y coordinates 8. Point is 3, comma 8. There we go. On to question 4. So question 4 gives us a wee diagram like this, and it asks us to find out angle... QRS, from Q to R to S, so I've shaded it in. Right, several different ways of doing this. This is the way that I chose to do it. Here, we have a triangle. This is a radius. This is a radius. Radius is the same length all the way around the circle. That means that this side and this side will be equal, which means that this angle and this angle will both be 28. We also know that this point is a tangent. It tells us that in the question, which just means it touches the circle, does not cross the circle. And this is a radius again. And when a tangent meets a radius, we get an angle of 90 degrees. So looking at the, like the big triangle from P to S to R and back to P, that angle there, that large, sorry, this large angle here, will be 118 degrees. So again, I don't know if I missed that, because I moved the camera. There's a radius, there's a tangent, so that bit's 90. This bit's 28, so that bit's 28, because we have an isosceles triangle on the circle. Right, so this is, this is 118, this is 28. Looking at the large triangle, the three angles have to add up to 180. So 118, add 28, add the missing angle, will make... 180, so angle QRS will be 180 minus 118 minus the 28, as I've just said from the circle, which comes out as 34 degrees, 4 marks. Make sure you show all working out. You cannot just look at it, muck about with it a bit and write down 34. You will not get all, actually 3 marks. You will not get all 3 marks for doing that. Right, question 5. One weekend, the attendance at five Premier League football matches were recorded. So it's 8,900, 12,700, 59,200, 10,300, 9,700. Part A, calculate the mean attendance. 
or to find the mean, you add the values up, divide by how many values. So if we add all of those up, it comes to, and divide by five, it comes to 20,160. So I've, uh, looks like I've taken a wee bit of a shortcut, done that in my head when I've been doing my work now, divide it by five. So that would come to 100,800, all divided by five. Right, part B, which of the two averages, the mean or the median, is more representative of the data? So it's like, which one gives the better average, the mean or the median? Well, looking at the numbers, we've got 8,900, 12,700, 59,200, 10,300, 9,700. That 59,200 one sticks out. It's a lot, lot higher than the other four values. So that's going to make the mean not as good a representation as the median. The median would give the middle number. If we put them in order, it would be round about the other four values. But the mean sort of drags that up. 20,160 is well above four of the five values. So in this case, the median would give a better representation. So the median, as it is closer to most of the numbers, the mean is affected by the 59,200. Right, on to number six. The equation x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0 can also be written as x minus 2, x minus 4 equals 0. So it gives us that in the question. It's factorised it for us. Write down the roots of the equation x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals zero. Right, to do that, we're at this stage here. So either the first bracket zero or the second bracket zero when we're finding the roots, in which case x is two or x is four. That's that one done. On to part B. State the coordinates of the points A, B and C. Right. Point B and point C is where it crosses the x-axis. When we're finding the roots, we're finding out the x-coordinate of where it intersects the x-axis. So it'd be 2, 0 and 4, 0. So by solving this, solving this here, we're finding out these two points. So B and C, 2, 0, 4, 0. Right, on point A, we know that the x-coordinate 0, because it's on the y-axis, we're none along. So we'll just put 0 into the equation. So it'll be 0 squared minus 6 zeros plus 8. So it'll be a height of 8, or the y-coordinate's 8. So point A will be at 0, 0,8. Right, on to number 7. The area of a triangle is 20... Oh, hang on, let me start part C. Beg your pardon. What is the equation of the axes of symmetry of this graph? So we know it crosses at 2, we know it crosses at 4. There's a line of symmetry down the middle, so that line of symmetry is going to go through x equals 3. In fact, anywhere on this dotted line, the x-coordinate will be 3. So the line of symmetry is x equals 3, because anywhere on the line, x equals 3. The x-coordinate is 3 anywhere on that line. On to number 7. The area of triangle ABC is 20 square centimetres, AC is 16, sin of C is a quarter. Right, so we'll have the formula. This is an important bit here that catches people out. I'm substituting in what we know, the area is 20. So half's a half. Little a we're trying to work out. Little b is 16. It gives us that in a question. The sin of c is a quarter. So we're not writing the sin of a quarter here. It says when you do the sin of the angle, sin of whatever angle c is, you will get one quarter. It will tell you it's one quarter. So where sin c is, all of sin c is a quarter. After that, half of 16 is 8. A quarter of 8 is 2. Times it by a, 20 will be 2a. So little a will be 10. Again, can't emphasise that enough. Catches a lot of people out. Sin of the angle is a quarter. So all of sin c is replaced with a quarter. Right, factorising. We have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So at the start of the bracket, I'm going to have an a. At the end of the bracket, because a times a makes a squared. To get b squared, I'm going to have to have a b and a b. 
after that, I'm just going to check that I get the 2AB. So A times B from the outside bit of foil would be an AB. B times A from the inside bit of foil would also be AB. So that the 2AB is there as well. So A squared plus 2AB plus B squared can go into the bracket like that. And we can write that as bracket squared. So hence or otherwise find the value of 94 squared at 2 times 94 times 6 plus 6 squared. Right, hence or otherwise, in other words, use what we've got up here. Look, 94 squared A squared, 2 times 94 times 6, 2 times A times B, 6 squared B squared. Basically, put 94 in for A, put 6 in for B. It's just substituting back into what we've just done, matching it up. So 94 add 6 is 100, 100 squared, 100 times 100 is 10,000. Right, question 9. Sketch the graph y equals negative 2 sin x. So the normal graph of sin x goes like that. That's 360, it goes up to 1 along to minus 1. The negative 2 at the front means it's going to have a height of negative 2. So the negative flips it over, so it's down there, and the 2 stretches it down to 2, gives it an amplitude of 2. So here's the proper one. So as we see here, it's been flipped over and been dragged down to minus 2, where we would normally have a minimum point here at 270 degrees of minus 1. Again, because it's flipped over, it's going to go up to a height of 2 at 270 degrees. There we go. So we get a mark for minus 2 along to 2 and one complete wave in 360 degrees. And another mark for getting a negative sine graph, so we've flipped it over. So a mark for the amplitude, 2 to minus 2, one complete wave, flipping it over to make it a negative sine graph. Last question. Simplify this, in other words, multiply it out, see what we we'll get. So we'll get... Root 2 times root 3 is root 6. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. And we've got minus root 6, not in the bracket. So we're done multiply that by root 2. So we've got this, take away this, they're the same thing. They will disappear. Left with root 4, which as you all know is 2. That's the end of the question paper.